Hello again. Um, this is another video about character concept art, um, basically concept design for an animation that I'm going to use. So the considerations that I'm worried about are not so much the the uniqueness of the design, but also how will it then be broken down into animation. So I start pretty much the same place as I started in another video that I have about character design. I'm um, using a different software. This is a free software called MyPaint. It's originally for Linux, but it works pretty good on uh, PC. I just never got it to work with my Cintiq because it was uh, it didn't recognize the pen pressure. So um, I discovered recently that if I have another software like Photoshop or even the Wacom uh, property uh, tool um, use the pressure. So if you test the pressure in another software and then you boot uh, my paint then the pressure will work which is which is nice it's something that uh, i didn't know i could do the problem with the my paint is that there's you know there's not a, as much selection tools like there is in photoshop and you know it's pretty much a sketch 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 you make a mistake you start another one because it's too too annoying to erase uh so, it, so it's really good for practicing because you don't you don't um uh, use any sort of line economy you just draw a lot so in this case, I, I just made a note to actually draw the hair shape as I wanted it to be. And I uh, sort of have that set to be something that I will uh, that will have um, a validity uh, afterwards that I'll keep referring to that little hairstyle and that will be that will be the final hairstyle for design. In this case, I'm explaining where I want to put my pivot points and how that influences, especially if the head's going to be really big then it's obvious that I'll need to, the arms to be long enough that they can go over the head. And then there's the problem of the shoulder pads, uh, which are going to be difficult to rotate because they are not in an angle that is useful for them to be rotated, you know, because you can only rotate things on, in the case of 2D, you can only rotate them in the screen space Z-axis, so the screen normal. Um, here I'm insisting a little bit more on the curve, uh, curviness of the back as well as the size of the sword and, um, and explaining how like a thick figure will look smaller even though it may actually be bigger than the, bigger than the other one. It's just if you make something looks, it'll look thicker like l thicker legs and thicker torso then it'll just give the idea that the guy is actually um, just a rounder and not as tall. I do want to have the limbs. I do want to have the ability to animate the character without him sort of fumbling about. But I don't want that to force the design to be different than what I imagined. So it's it's a little bit of a battle between what I want to do and what I anticipate that the software is going to allow me to do. So I kind of have to find that sort of common ground. Um, and here I'm explaining the perspective in RPG games where characters are facing each other, but they're not really facing each other because of the uh, angle of the body. Um, so there's a lot of, because again, because this was a, a, a streaming a session, there's a lot of explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing. And some of these are very uh, contextualized to what I was saying at the time, which I have to be honest with you, I don't exactly remember everything. But I do um, kind of remember the gist of it. So in this case, uh, again, drawing the arms is fairly important because it gives me, right away, it gives me a, a notion of size. So as you can see, I'm referring back to that hairstyle, um, trying to get that to look, um, to look the same as it was previously. And, and talking about the angle there of the body, I sort of made the uh, character lean forwards a little too much. Um, so that's something that would have to be fixed afterwards, either by skewing the graphic and before I start painting it, or just by overall uh, redrawing the pose, especially of the legs. If I move the legs, especially the feet, if I move it a little bit closer, then it would be nicer. Now in this case, I'm having a go here at drawing a shoulder pad with the neck protection as well, and just doing this on a new layer. The armbands or the the guards there, that's pretty much just to add a, a, an extremity to the limb, if that makes sense. Because when you're running, when you animate, if the extremities or if like the hands or the feet, if they can be slightly more visible, then it's going to accentuate your animation. It 
it's uh, not unusual that you'll find people animating with um, with editor edited um, graphics. Like if just make the feet and hand look different, and the head as well, just so that they, they stand out when you're uh, when you're drawing. You see, I added a cape there, but gave it away. Gave up that uh, very quick as I realized it was going to be almost impossible to do that in a uh, sort of in an easy way. Um, and I'm testing here with a bigger head, see if that might solve it because so far I've yet I've not yet been happy with the design. I mean, they're fine, they look okay, but they're not exactly what I had imagined for one, and um, and it's just that the shape doesn't really give me any sort of unique vibe, any sort of coolness. It's just a generic kind of guy. And, and that's uh, annoying me slightly because I was sort of convincing myself that I could figure it out and give it a little more, more style. Um, so I'm having a go at it. Or maybe the guy's casting a, a spell or in this case, it's just uh, trying to do a few, um, a few frames for when the animation happens. So in this case, he's banging the sword in the ground. He's going to do this sort of um, grunt animation. Um, and uh, just have that be a frame that'll explain to me how much do I need to animate the character. In this case, just before he, or after he hits, the, he flies a little bit. And this is, I see the, sort of the anticipation pose. How much do I need to make the guy's arms big and, and expand? And that kind of, and that's kind of cool to anticipate a few things. Okay, so it's always nice to try and draw those keyframes before. Um, and that was me just going frame one, two, three, and four, um, not any sort of sequence. Again, the problem with the rotation of objects that are three D is that you can only draw them in this direction. So making a three D object tilt up and down, it would be complicated. Um, so, for example, this arm. If you wanted to rotate it to this position, you definitely have to create a different spike. You can't just go in and, and spin something. But this position here, you can animate it quite easily just by having those pivot points and rotating the, uh, the, the different pieces that build up the arm. Um, in this case, oh, I, th I think I'm talking about a Pringle and how complicated it is to animate a Pringle because it is a very three-dimensional uh, shape. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it happens in all three axes. That does deformation in all three axes. This is another frame of, uh, for example, I would, if I wanted to do this attack, I would definitely need to draw different torsos for the different stages of the rotation, or just have one frame go to the other instantly, and then have that sort of line uh, go through, or just mirror things very quickly so that I actually only need one torso. And this is the design that I just this, that I decide to have a go at, because I'm kind of I'm kind of going. I think I remember it in my head or in my mind. Remember it being very almost like a bean, you know, like very round and and almost like a a jelly bean bear or something. So I just make the just make the character really round at the feet, and I think I exaggerate the sword. I think I, at least I make the sword a bit bigger than it would be on another design. Uh, and just really go for a really rounded. Uh, there we go. That's a big sword. A really rounded kind of kind of shape. It's almost like the legs are two tentacles, fat, very fat tentacles uh, pushing out of the waist. And even though I know that this is going to be worse for animation, I still want to try and design it. I still want to try and figure how figure out how I'm going to do that. How much more effort is it going to take for me to draw that? Actually, um, so this is kind of a silhouette of the. Of the character kind of looks like the uh, that vehicle from the scavengers and in, uh, in the first uh, or actually in the fourth Star Wars and try to sell uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 to uh, to Luke. Uh, this is a little bit more in-depth design. This only happens when you're kind of happy or at least I only tend to do it when I'm kind of happy with a design which is to figure out the shapes afterwards. So this would be the boot and this would be the boot from the front view and I'm trying to interpret the shape because I really have to get to know the 3 dness of the shapes, the volume of the shape, so that I can then replicate it um, fairly well. In this case, I don't want to do the like big wrist thing. I want to do it like a continuous uh, shape, like the, there, the badminton. Uh, is it a ball? It's not called a ball. I think the feather. Uh, and I'm also trying to figure out 
in this case, I think I'm just explaining what the um, sort of what the volume is of the uh, of the leg piece. So it's kind of a a cup that I had 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 is uh, or has had its uh, top cut in an angle. Uh, and then the, obviously there's the uh, a necessity for drawing the angle to cover up the leg or the sorry the the foot so that it swivels on that. In the case of the chest, I'm trying to figure out a very rounded chest shape in which I'm going to sit my uh, my shoulder pads, or if it's going to be a, a, like a chest piece, an armor chest piece. But I think in the end, I actually leave it as um, I just leave it as um, as a cloth piece and just the shoulder pads attached on there. Actually, I don't even know how the shoulder pads get attached, but that's fine. Um, and I was explaining that you don't want to leave big surfaces all that empty because then they become fairly boring. I mean, sure, not everything has to have an insane amount of detail, but just a little bit more. And this, I think, I'm making reference to the uh, to the Phoenix armor in Saint Seiya, I think it was. And this is just a request from the sh from the chat. Someone asks to draw a star uh, for some reason. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy with this one, with this design. And this is the one that I'm going to stick to, that I'm going to shade and illustrate and then uh, eventually separate into different parts so that I can animate it. And this is the, uh, the labors of, uh, of this uh, streaming session. So that was it, designing and kind of refining a little bit of a shape of a character uh, so that I can then use it for animation.